so I promised the other day that I was going to do a video kind of explaining the process of cutting up your sculpture and getting it ready for um, molding and casting. Um, so I'm going to do that today. Um, it's not going to be too long of a video. Um, but I do want to explain a couple of things. Because I know people are kind of curious about how it's done. So I'm going to explain it um, quickly and as efficiently as possible. Sorry for the mess. I was just actually finishing up a little more cleaning on the sculpture, getting it ready for this video to uh, explain it to you. So here, I'll make sure I get this into the camera properly and hopefully the sound is working good. I did a little test to see and it sounded not too bad. I don't have my microphone, the battery ran out on it. So I'm just using the microphone off the camera. So we have the torso here and you can see the legs, we have the tail. Um, we have the head over here. We actually have the other head option over here. I'll explain that at the end. Um, and last Friday, um, this was all, this here was all one piece. So we're not, we wouldn't want to mold it that way because it would be very difficult. It can be done um, in a multi-piece mold, but that's kind of hard to do. So we needed to cut it down um, to make it into uh, a model kit um, and prepare it to be to uh, be made into um, resin casts and uh, prepare it uh, first of all for uh, silicone molds which is this this is actually a uh, mold for the longer head which you can see um, off to the left side of your screen there so this is what we're preparing for right now. So on Friday I cut this up, took some pictures and said that I would explain the process of how I did it. <clears throat> so to begin to explain the process I kind of need to explain what this sculpture is made of. Now I don't know if I can show you guys. I'll see if I can flip it over so you can see well, actually, the tail is probably the best way to explain it. So you can see this right here. This is a block of wood. There's a hole right there. And that's where the wire came out for the tail. This shiny stuff is actually tin foil to bulk it out. This brown uh, clay here um, is some um, um, epoxy sculpt that I had left. I had some brown epoxy sculpt. And then over top, um, there's some dark brown, and then you can see some bluish gray, different colors, just because that's what I had. But this is Super Sculpey. It's a mixture, actually, of Super Sculpey and Super Sculpey Firm. So that's what this sculpture is basically made out of. It has um, epoxy clay for the first layer. That gives it the strength. Um, makes it really durable um, if you're wondering what that stuff would look like if you're going to go buy it it would be this stuff right here it actually comes in two tubs and uh, that's what you're that's what we're talking about there actually while I'm talking to you because we're, we're going to use some of that I'm going to pull out a little bit of it and get a little bit of it and get it started And then over top, like I was explaining, we use um, another product called Super Sculpey, and it's a 50-50 mix of regular Super Sculpey, which is the beige, um, well, more actually like a um, translucent, like a flesh tone uh, colored Sculpey mixed with the gray firm Sculpey. Um, the gray Sculpey is a little bit too firm for my liking. And it translucent holds detail better, but I also find that the gray is actually um, a little bit more durable. So together, they make the perfect mix, and that's how I choose to do it. Now the blue 
colored stuff you see is actually was an experiment where I was trying Super Sculpey Firm mixed with Primo Sculpey, but that's uh, for another time. <clears throat> so, with that being said, there's kind of something cool that you can do with Super Sculpey even after it's baked. And this kind of helps for making your models a little bit nicer um, when casting them. Um, and that is that you can reheat Sculpey. And when you reheat Sculpey, it gets soft again just for the time that it's heated up. And that's a really nice feature. And so what that allowed me to do when I did it the other day is that allowed me to go in and I'm going to actually just stop mixing this clay for a minute and I'm going to show you and I'm going to take, we're going to flip this over and you can see right here this cut. So let's take this foot and you can see that, that cut is very thin. Bring it right in and turn it around. You can see the cut itself is very thin and the fit is actually very nice. There's some dust on it so it actually looks a little messier than what it is. But if you of course my light needs to come up to show you a little bit better. Let's see if I can do that. My light's a little bit old so it keeps falling off. I'm going to see if I can show you. Bring it in close so you can see. Let's get that in there. So you can see, especially near the front, that it's pretty close. Let's see if I can lift it off. You can see how the how nice the fit is. So what I did when it was still attached is I came in with this really nasty looking old heat gun which has been used for multiple styles of artwork for both mine and my live and when it was still together like this I came in and I heated all around obviously my fingers weren't in the way because this heats up really hot and then once I heated it up I was able to come in with a really sharp knife and decide exactly where I wanted the cut to be. So I came in like that and I decided where I wanted it to be. So and I came in and because there's still multiple layers of Sculpey I was able to even push down and get the cut and I was able to also come in from this side and get a nice cut as well and push in here because this especially with these because they were mostly mostly sculpting and as a matter of fact I don't think with this leg there was any of the epoxy sculpt <clears throat> I'll explain that part a little bit later so I was able to push in and then wherever it was really straight that's where I tried to push in the most to make it um, as loose as I possibly could same with here, kept pushing it in. Now you can see right here this shiny part. That's where the armature wire was attached. And it's that big thick armature wire. I'm going to stand up and grab it. It's this armature wire right here. You can see it has a thick Gauge, very nice to work with. So that's a little different story. Obviously, I won't be able to get through that, but because I cut in, same with here, I cut in and I pushed in, and I got it as nice and close as I could, and I pushed in. I was able to then start wiggling slowly and carefully and get this to move a little bit so I it, it was separated like this a little bit. Then I came in with a saw that I have. Very, very paper thin saw. And it's actually not really meant for 
that material. It's actually meant for wood. You've seen these at the hobby shop. But because that the metal, that wire is really soft, it actually cuts through that. And so I came in and I did this very slowly and I had to be careful. I had to watch because these cuts weren't always straight. Some of them you'll see as I flip it around are on an angle. You can see on the front here too, they're on different angles. So I had to be careful. Some of it I was like just a little bit. So it was, it's painstaking work. It's You can't rush because that's when you mess it up, right? <clears throat> so pretty much it's like this. Finish it off like that. So that's pretty easy. It seems like. Right? It's not as long as you take your time. That's the main thing. It's taking your time to do it. Now, it's not always that easy. It worked out pretty good. This one's fairly straight, so we had to get in and saw. Same thing, like that. Worked out for the most part. The front was a little more difficult, as you can see. Now you're probably wondering why there's holes there right now. That's going to be explained in just a moment's time. Um, the front was fine because I had made two different options for the head. The front already had a head before this was even finished sculpting so it it was it was fine. It was already done. So the head was actually or the body was actually sculpted around the head so it's fine. The tail was attached part and we'll put it back on and you can see I'll bring it up and you can see that it's very tight it fits fairly well so you can see the only spot is right around here where it's a little bit loose you can see that there's a little bit but with any model kit there's there's going to be a seam or something to fill you know but it's fairly good so the problem with this part though is that this has a lot of epoxy sculpt. So when I was cutting with my knife and I started heating up, I started here and I come down to about here and you can see I probably only got in about that far. I come down here and I came down this way and I kind of had to keep going back and forth to make sure that I was going to get to where I was meeting up and I cut all the way around and by the time I'd done that the first time with these they were already nice and wiggly when I'd done that with this it wasn't moving at all <clears throat> so I knew there was a problem so I had to come back and any spots where I could get in I would slowly cut and stop and I would push in and I would try really hard to push in certain spots while holding the tail firmly in place but not squeezing it to break it or anything like that so again very long pro process for one part you know trying to push a cut in because it, it's a lot harder uh, material and then I would have to come in with this in certain areas like here and saw like slowly saw and I have to be careful even showing you now that this is clean you know or like here and saw like a certain spot really slowly and it took a long time you know and there was a couple of times when I had to switch to a larger tool which is this one now unfortunately when you switch to a thicker saw you can tell just because of the thickness of the blade you're losing more of the sculpture anyway this one took a lot longer to get through so once I got through all of this I had lost a little bit more of the sculpture and and some pieces were missing so what I had done that's why I left this piece on I'm about to cut it off here in a few moments but I left this on and left this hole even when I put some of this filler back on and I had attached this back on I tacked on 
tapped it back on with two pieces or two little dots of super glue and just enough to hold it in place. Sorry, I gotta pay attention to the camera. And then I re-sculpted some of the skin detail, put some more clay on, re-sculpted, left some of the line open where it was thin because it doesn't matter. You're gonna have a line because it's cut into pieces. But any parts where it was it was too wide or something that happened, I re-sculpted it. And you can do that. You can re-sculpt. And so that's what I did. I re-sculpted it and then I baked it again. And that's okay to do that. So, you know, because sometimes things get damaged. So that's that's the other thing that you can do. You can come back in. If you damage a part, it's okay. You just have to re-sculpt it. So try and save your armature wire on one end, or if not, just tack it on with a little bit of super glue. But when you're filling up, leave some of the line open so you have a spot to stick your exacto knife in. Bake it properly. Make sure it's fully baked. When it when it cools down, <clears throat> then you take your exacto knife and come in. You put your hands so that you can get it started, and come back in and recut. And then you have a nice cut and you have a nice fit. So you can see that you have a nice fit. So that explains pretty much how. I cut this sculpture into pieces. Now I'm putting this up on YouTube and I'll be sharing it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So if you have any more questions about the cutting up process, please leave me a comment. I will try to get back to you and answer it as soon as possible. So there's one more thing I'm going to show you and I better start mixing this up because I'm actually going to show you here in just a second. And I've got to grab one thing that I forgot to grab. But we're going to talk about making registration keys. And then I'll be done with this video. But I think registration keys are an important part. Not always, and I'll explain why. Because on, especially on this dinosaur, I'm actually not going to make registration keys for every part. And, uh, uh, but on other parts, I'm going to. And that's uh, what I'm going to explain to you in just a moment. I'm just going to mix this clay up. But while I'm mixing the clay up, I'm going to lay this out for just a moment. This is the solvent for the epoxy. So we've got front, back, front. We've got a tail. We've got another head. We've got our horns. Hopefully you can see all of these pieces. So this is what the model kit will be. There will be a resin model kit and when you go to, to get it you will have a choice between the long skull or the wide skull and uh, that's pretty much how I'm going to, to set it up. So it will be a choice between one or the other. You can choose to get both. Obviously it would be an extra additional fee. Or you could get two whole dinosaurs. One with each skull. You know because they're charging you could actually make them so they're um, like headbutting each other. Like ramming into each other. Um, which would actually be kind of cool. I was thinking of making a scene like that myself with this particular um, model. So I've got the clay almost mixed up here and one other thing I will tell you is that I'm going to try and put the whole process um, on YouTube uh, for molding and casting this guy. I have put some up before. Uh, I've kind of done live videos where I've molded and casted and stuff. But I'm going to just make videos, throw them up and let people uh, put comments on them as opposed to putting live video. That way um, I can focus on actually making the video. They won't be as long because I'm not looking and trying to answer questions at the same time. So that's where I'm going with that. So there'd be one more, uh, or sorry, one video on making the mold walls, pouring the first half. Um, probably a, a quick video um, where I pour out the second half and take the clay off first half and then obviously the last one would be pouring on the casting 
So that's where we're going with that. All right, so we have some epoxy clay. So quickly, before I talk about the keys, that looks pretty good there. I'm looking quickly at any holes when I cut up the clay, or cut up the sculpture rather. And I left, if I left any holes or anything where the, the silicone, because the silicone's fairly thin and I don't want it running down into any of these parts. So this one here is a prime example of a problem. You can see right there. There's some spots in the silicone because it is thin. It would run right down inside all of that. And it would just be a huge mess to clean all that up. And that is something that I don't want to have to deal with. It would be a problem. There'd be silicone in there and have to cut it off. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be too much of a problem. I should. I guess let me get overly dramatic, but it could be a problem. You know, but you don't want it running in. And it's also about conserving the product too, right? Silicone is expensive. So there we go. That looks better. Looks a lot smoother, and it's just a, a cleaner part. Like when you get. When you get this, you don't want it to look all chopped up. You want it to look nice and smooth. There we go. I think that looks a million times better. The other thing you have to make sure, though, when you do that, you want to make sure that it fits still. So I've done that. I come in. I look check it out, press it up, it fits good. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want to do. Okay, both back legs are checked. Now, here's the here's the thing. So the other day when I did it, I made these keys. So you can see there's some registration keys on there. So that way the legs will fit on in a certain way because we need them to fit. Like this is a galloping dinosaur and I have to make sure that the, that it fits in a certain way so I have to line it up it can't fit back here it can't fit up here obviously or the dinosaur is going to be up like this <laughs> so, I mean maybe that'd be cool maybe not so here's how we do it so we've got the one side done that's pretty easy and all I did was use the same stuff actually I didn't I used plumbers of epoxy because it dries in five minutes and then I come down with my X-Acto, flatten it first, put some water, solvent on, flatten it, cut, 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 flatten it again, cut, make sure, just make sure it looks like that, done. So now, what we need to do, we want to fill a lot of this in. It doesn't need to be all deep and all that stuff. I just went a little overzealous with drilling it out. back in. We're going to fill that up. A little of solvent. Maybe a little more clay. I don't want it going over the edge like that. There's, there's detail everywhere else. Some of this will spill over when you see what I do. That's fine. Let's dip this. This brush. This brush is too nice. Okay, so. Here's what you do. I'll show you this part, and then we'll end the video, and then I will upload it to YouTube. 
And like I said, you guys can leave comments. Let me know what you want to see. If there's anything that you want to let me know that you'd like to see for sure in the next video, then uh, please be sure to comment. So here's, we got some plastic wrap. And the reason why I got the plastic wrap is because I don't want this to stick. And what I want to do is I want to line it up because I don't want I want to make sure it's lined up all the way around. There's a current too. Look at that. And there we go. Now there is another way to do it. Now, unfortunately, the bag kind of made a <clears throat> made a weird little zoom in here. And so the bag kind of put a little bit of waves in it and stuff. I don't like that, so I'm going to smooth that out with a little bit of uh, a little softer uh, brush. I can do and there's also another way to do this so that doesn't happen which is simply putting some water on the part you're pushing in so that it doesn't stick on there but plastic method works good now we're going to quickly put in dab the excess off just so Guys, and there we go. And that's how you make a mold key. Do this first, this side, sorry. Let it dry. There's your mold key. You, once this is dry, saran wrap, soft clay. There you go. And the reason why we're not doing mold keys on the back legs is because, like you can see, it only fits one way because it's cut like this. It's not cut straight across. It was cut straight across down here and could go like this, you know, or like this. Then we wouldn't have to make up a, a key. But I've cut it so you can clearly see that it only goes one way. There's no other way that you could put, possibly put that leg in. So that's why, in this case, I'm not making one. And same with the tail, because the tail is cut in these shapes. I'm just going to fill this in and I'm going to mold it just like that. And when I make the mold, because the tail has the opposites with this little groove in there, that groove is going to sit up against that groove and it's going to fit right in perfectly. So again, you don't always need, you don't always need these keys, but it's good to know how to do them when you, when you do need them. So that's how you make the mold keys and that's how you cut up your sculpture so hopefully this helped hopefully it explained it all i was going to actually cut up the sculpture in front of you guys but that's a lot of pressure and if it really breaks or drops or something happens that would be a little bit crazy but anyway i hope this helps again um if you like the video then please subscribe to my youtube channel hit me up on facebook instagram twitter um and uh, let me know what else you'd like to see. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a great day.